Hi, welcome to Debbie's Book Blog. I'm so glad that you had a chance to find my channel this week, and I'm looking forward to speaking to you about something that's a little bit personal with me today, and that involves my dog, Buddy, who's a therapy dog here at Nemours Children's Hospital, which is back in the background. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what's involved in training and working with the dog and volunteering with a therapy dog. And what kind of brought this up is, there's a new book that recently came out here this fall. The book is called Love Is All You Need by Jennifer Arnold. Dogs are one of the most social animals, second only to humans, and they have such a great natural instinct for evaluating emotions and feelings in those around them. Jennifer Arnold has trained service dogs for over 25 years and she's a pioneer in bond-based training. Now most of us have heard about positive and negative reinforcement, but she's just gone that little bit further and based all of her training on bond-based training. And it's worked extremely successful for her in training service dogs. She believes that dogs can learn by exclusion and they can be taught to make choices and that you can teach versus training a dog. So I thought, based on this book that I enjoyed so much that I'd talk a little bit more about my own experiences with Buddy, who's my therapy dog who visits here at the Children's Hospital. Buddy is a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier and he's currently eight and a half years old. And he's been a therapy dog since he was 10 months of age. You know, this breed is a very active breed. They love to go hiking, which is one of the reasons I chose this breed but they're also a very social type of dog and they just love being around people and this breed extremely loves to be around children. So I thought maybe I'd talk to you a little bit about what's involved in actually teaching and training a therapy dog and there is such a need for these types of dogs here out in the public that if you have a really nice dog that you currently own, it's not gonna be that much effort for you to start volunteering with your dog as a therapy animal. One of the things that you might want to first do is search on the internet and try and find a group that you could volunteer through. Here in the four state area of Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, and New Jersey, there's a group called Paws for People. There's also an international group, group called Therapy Dogs International. But hey, there's groups all over the United States that you could search for and find where you could volunteer through. I chose Paws for People because they were a local group. They already had connections with different places that I could choose to volunteer at. Plus they also had a training program and then they also have insurance, which is something we all kind of forget about that, you know, they're still animals. Um, if they accidentally scratch somebody or, you know, haven't helped, you know, bit somebody, um, you want to always make sure that you have some good insurance when you're volunteering as a, with your dog for as a therapy animal. So once you find a good group that you feel like you're going to fit in, then you want to kind of research and see what kind of training they may have that you'll have to pass with your dog. This particular group, um, they have a standard test where the dog needs to sit, stay, lay down. It has to be able to pat, do the leave it command, which that's one of the harder commands for most of the dogs to do. You need to be able to greet another person while your dog stays calm and your dog needs to um, be able to pass beside another dog without getting too excited and you know jumping and being unpredictable. You know if you're going to be working in an environment where there might be special needs you'll want to practice with your dog around things like canes, wheelchairs, um, walkers. Um, the test will involve some loud noises where somebody may put some throw some notebooks on the ground that the dog he can react to it but he has to stay calm and you know not barking not growling you know those are the kinds of things that you have to be careful about with your dog that they can pass under those kinds of behaviors so once you get an idea of what the test is going to involve then you're going to want to practice the things that you feel your dog may have a little bit more of a challenge with um, one of the the stay commands is you put the dog in a sit or stay position. You have to walk 20 foot away without the dog moving and then come back. So that was something I had to practice with Buddy quite a bit so he'd stay in one position. So once we've practiced the test, um, we, it takes two half a days in our particular case to be able to pass the test. 
The first day is where you go in for like a half a Saturday and there's a number of people that evaluate the dog's behavior. The big thing they're testing or looking for in your dog is does he have a really nice, calm, congenial, social type of personality? You know, they'll come up and approach your dog and try to pet him whether he's laying down, whether he's sitting down, just to see how he's going to react because there'll be a lot of unexpected things happening in the visitation when you're out with your dog. Then the second Saturday we came back and we actually took the test. It's similar to the canine good citizen except for you don't leave your dog unattended with somebody else. Um, once you pass the test, then you're going to want to choose a place that you'd like to go ahead and volunteer at and start your visiting. Now you want to make sure when you do your visiting that you match up to a place that you and your dog are going to be happy. Um, Buddy passed at the age of 10 months and so we chose to start visiting in a nursing home where the patients were a little bit, bit more able-bodied but they may have had something like dementia or something. But since he still had a lot of the puppy behaviors, we wanted to make sure um, that he fit into a, a visiting location where it wouldn't be a problem. Once Buddy got to be about five years old, I started noticing that he actually just loved to be around kids. So here at Nemours at the Children's Hospital, they started a program. We started in the outpatient area, visiting in, oh, places like MRI, the blood lab, um, the cardiology area. And then we moved on to become an inpatient dog where we actually visit with the kids in the hospital um, where he may get up on the beds and kind of visit with the different kids. And he just loves it, I have to tell you. So if you have a really good-natured, friendly dog and you're looking for something to volunteer at in your local community, I have to tell you that pet therapy is an absolutely wonderful volunteer activity. I never get tired of it. I love my dog. I love to share my dog with everybody around and it's something you can, can go ahead and look at getting into. Well, I hope you enjoyed my video this week about pet therapy. If you have any questions at all about how we got started or what's involved in pet therapy, be sure and leave some comments down below and I hope you like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks and I look forward to seeing you again next week.